Hi! In this video, we're going to discuss about system design. These are the timeline. What is system? What is design? What is system design? Why do we need it? And what are the required concepts? Now, what is system? A system is a group of interacting or interrelated elements that act according to a set of rules to form a united whole. It is an assembly of different components for the specified requirements or a collection of technologies that communicate and interact to each other in order to serve a certain set of user and a certain set of requirements. For example, we have a large scale of a system. In, an, in the applications, we have an Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube. And for the real world system, we have also the building, hotel, hospital, and theater. So those are examples of a large scale system, which suit to the need of a certain set of user and a certain set of requirements. All the system build with a real world system and build with a computing system and have a certain things in common, like they are built up of some parts of components or model which need to interact and work together in order to fulfill the purpose of the system. Example, in the building, all buildings have walls, floors, selling, electricity supply, water supply, different buildings, but have a different set of users and different set of requirements. Similarly, in the system software, like the Instagram, WhatsApp, and Netflix. So the system can be defined keeping these three factors. The user of the system, the requirements of those users and the components that are chosen in order to build the system to serve the user and the requirements. Let's go to the design. So what is design? Design is how efficiently the assembly of different components is done. It is a process of understanding the user requirements and selecting the components, modules, and software technologies how it will going to be entertained, communicating with each other to actually solve the need of the system. For example, if we have to build a large application like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and YouTube, first, we need to know the requirements. Generally, we categorize the requirements such as functional and non-functional requirements. So for the functional requirements, let's say for the Instagram, you have to upload the image, like, share, or comments, and etc. For the YouTube, you have to upload the video, view, like, comments, search, subscribe to a channel. And that's the example for the functional requirements. For the non-functional requirements, for the Instagram, any image uploaded by a user should not be lost. There should be no downtime. The system should be easily scalable. Similarly, we can do it like some other application like YouTube, Facebook, and Netflix. Here, we should also understand that based on requirements, we also decide what is important and what is not. And there, we can do the trade-off or we're not. So it's all about balancing the things. For example, in Instagram, it is important a fast image rendering because on user device is very important because Instagram is all about images. And it is not important the number of comments in the post because it might not be important you can have no real thing across a multiple server. Why we need it? We need it because it is easily scalable so that it should be able to add a machine, no downtime, low latency, 
multiple copies in case of a hardware failure, data consistency, even load distribution, work together, and best efficiency. Okay, these are the required concepts in system design, computer network, distributed systems, parallel computing. So by using the concept, we do the following. Estimation, database design, API design, storage system, catching, load balancing, and many more. Why is design so difficult? For analysis, it focuses on the application domain. For the design, it focuses on the solution domain. The solution domain is changing very rapidly. It's a half-time knowledge in software engineering, about three to five years. It cost of hardware rapidly sinking. For the design, knowledge is a moving target. So for the design window, time in which design decision have to be made. So the scope of a system design, there is a bridge to gap. So in bridge to gap between a problem and existing system in a manageable way, how? Use divide and conquer. First, identify the design goals. Model the new system design as a set of subsystem and address the major design goals. So these are the gap between the problem and existing system of a system design. So there are eight issues in system design. First, identify design goals, which is the trade-off. Second, a subsystem decomposition. It is a layers versus a partition. It's a coherence and coupling. The third, identify the concurrency. It is a identification of parallelism in the process thread. The fourth one is a hardware software mapping. It's identification of nodes, a special purpose system, by versus build, by versus build network connectivity. The fifth one is a persistent data management. It's about storing persistent object, file system versus database. And for the sixth one, the global resources handling. It is about the access control, ACL versus capability security. The seventh, software control. It's monolithic, event-driven. It's a processes. And then the eighth one is the boundary conditions, initialization, termination, or failure. So those are the eight issues in system design. Now, we also have to understand the analysis sources about the requirements and system model. So there are the example, non-functional requirements, functional model, dynamic model, object model, dynamic model, and the functional model. Now, how are we gonna analyze the model influence system design? So how the analysis models influence system design? So this is the analysis to system design. Under the non-functional requirements, it's a design goals. Under the functional model, it's a system decomposition. Under dynamic model, it's a concurrency. And under the object model, it's a hardware, software mapping, and data management. And then they, under the dynamic model, it's have a software control and global resource handling. And then the functional model, under the functional model, it's a boundary condition. So from analysis to system design. These are the example of the design goals. For reliability, it should have a good documentation. Modifiability, well-defined interfaces. Maintainability, should have a user friendliness. Understandability, reuse of components. Adaptability, rapid development. Reusability, minimum number of errors. Efficiency, 
readability, we have the portability and ease of learning, traceability, ease of remembering, fault tolerance is ease of use, the backward compatibility should have increased productivity, cost effectiveness should have a low cost, and the robustness is a flexibility. And then the last one, the high performance. So those are the example of the design goals. So that's all in this video. You know already what is system design.